Bells. Hi everyone, my name is Belly. You have no clue what amazing band I have with me today. Hi, my name is Lloyd. I'm the singer and guitarist in the band Endless Peaks. And my name is Lewis, and I play the bass guitar in Endless Peaks. How are you today, guys? Good. Come the on. end. <laughs> Super cute. According to Facebook, at Endless Peaks, you define yourself as an indie psychedelic rock band conformed by Lloyd Lewis and a drummer that is called Theo. And you're based in Bournemouth. Yes, <laughs> you've done your research. Yeah, yeah, everything right so far. <laughs> and you are siblings. We yeah. are siblings, yeah, we're brothers and we live together. How is it to live together? It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we grew up together and the fact that your brothers, you know, there's no holding back. If we have a problem, we, we talk about it and most of the time we just get, up, get on with it, don't we? It's quite good for the creative dynamic as well because obviously we can just play music whenever we want to. And if we don't agree, we just put the boxing gloves on and uh, have a scrap. No, I'm joking, that means like have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> How did you pick the name? We were looking at names for a while. One of the names that we had in the running was Peaks. Um, Peaks on its own. And I was actually looking, I was just reading the sleeve of Tame Impala's album, um, Currents. I was reading the LP sleeve um, and I noticed at the end he signed it off saying Endless Love. And I thought that was really nice. Uh, well, Peaks and Endless, obviously. For me, that those two words together has like a, a deeper meaning. It kind of means, you know, the only way is up. And so on the back of that, it's, you know, it has a quite a positive message behind it. So that was why we, we decided to go with it in the end. And obviously the logo um, kind of came quite a key part of the name as well. Um, the two go, you know, hand in hand. What I think, what is bringing me that name is like the life, you know, because you have peaks and then you're going down, as you mentioned before, like you have to, um, do a big effort to go to the peak and then you have to, maybe you are going down, maybe you are staying there, but basically life is like this, peaks. So mm -hmm. it's like life. The proper meaning yeah. of life is endless peaks. It's a good analogy. Yeah, it is. It's nice. good, you know, everyone, I think everyone can probably interpret that in their own, in their own way as well. And everyone has peaks and troughs in life. I think it's just important to stay positive and keep, keep reaching for higher things. Okay, if you were in, Endless Peaks, what's supposed to be your name? Is, a, is another name for the band, you mean? Yeah. Or, well, you had, uh, was it Lonely Stereo? Or was that like Lonely, a name? Lonely Stereo, yeah. On Infinity. On Infinity, one. yeah, that was a good one. Uh, Mind Elsewhere was another one. I mean, we can't be, we're giving these, these perfectly good band names out. People do. It's a claim. So, your first performance, it was in London. Uh, we did a few shows in Bournemouth first, actually, I would have thought. It was in a, uh, Old Street in Shoreditch in London. Road trip and workshop. Yeah. Ah, yeah, well done. That's the one. <laughs> that was our first London gig. Yeah, I think we played a couple of Bournemouth shows before that. And what about the one that you did in Southampton with Antiros? That was good. Nakamara. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. We ended up actually playing like the headline slot. When we finished playing our set, uh, everyone sort of then migrated out onto the street and the other band, Anteros, were there kind of hanging out in their tour bus and they ended up being a bit of a party out in the street yeah. afterwards, which was quite fun. So before, I understood that you were four, isn't it? Used to be, Lewis and myself, and then we had Chanel, who was our drummer then, and a, and a chap called Connor used to play keyboard for us. It was sort of mutual, but they both had other things going on in their lives. We all sort of sat down and agreed that maybe it's fine, we'll go our separate ways. We're still all really good friends. We see each other quite a bit and um, yeah, we're still good friends, but they just had to take on other life challenges. Okay, what about your fest? Because you have been in uh, multiple fests before, isn't it? You have <laughs> been in the Why Not Fest. That was the biggest one we did. It was, uh, we were lucky actually, because it got, the rest of the festival got completely rained off. Like the site just got swamped with mud. So we rocked up on the Friday night and it was just shutting down with rain all evening. And the next day we woke up and it was sunny, it was glorious. We were like, wow, this is gonna be so much fun. We're gonna have a great festival. Played the show in the afternoon, had a great time. Show was awesome. And then from the evening onwards, it just chucked down more rain. And then we woke up the next morning and they canceled the whole festival. So we didn't get to enjoy any of the other bands or anything. We have a four by four. So we, we were like, see you later guys. And we just literally, hopped it right out of the festival, but everyone else was bogged. <laughs> like people were getting rescued left, right and center. 
What about your relation with BAFTA or fight the good fight? BAFTA? Yes. So I, we have some good friends um, also in the creative space. They uh, are film producers and directors and they created a movie, Gangland Revenge. It was filmed in Southampton. Most of it was filmed in Southampton. Um, it's a movie, it's on Amazon Prime and stuff like that you can watch now. Um, our song got featured in the, uh, the opening part, the opening scene of that movie. How do you feel there inside the <laughs> premiere that you saw? Yeah, it was, I mean, went to see it in the premiere, and obviously, when you when your song comes on to the title of a movie, it's it's just a real feeling. It was a full cinema as well, like you know, there was there's a lot of people watching, uh, and the way that they used it, like the, the thing about that that uh, that song in particular, Fair Weather, it's kind of like there's a quite a contrast in tone from the verse to the chorus, and it is very much about love and hate, and um, it's called fair weather because you know it's about treating someone the way you want to when it suits you and the way they used it in that film they use it in a positive light at the beginning and then very quickly the tone of the movie shifts to like a kind of negative light as well so they, they, they fit it in quite nicely um with the tone of the movie kind of matching how how we sort of intended for the song to be interpreted as well when did you discover that you love music how it happened i mean obviously we grew up together and we we had the same sort of influence from our parents. We, we aren't we aren't from one of those families where the parents are like musicians and music crazy, but they did listen to some music which influenced us. But for me, I got, when I was probably about eight nine years old, I started listening to bands like Linkin Park, The Strokes, those those sort of bands at that sort of age where you kind of you know find a bit of a rebellious streak in you. A real kind of mixture of like you know the alternative grungy rock bands who were big on the scene at that time and then um you know the internet came around and i just spent time just looking for music just trying to find new music that i love and it was kind of unique to me i always had a thirst to try and find music that wasn't necessarily in the mainstream like to try and find something that would kind of uh, resonate with me and i don't know we used to do a lot of film soundtracks and stuff when we was kids yeah well, we used to make stupid films get music from those mine's less exciting i was like into acting when I was younger. So I was always singing in plays. And so I started singing from ages ago. But did you uh, study something? How did you learn the, the instruments or singing? Oh yeah, so that came a bit later on. When Lewis started, Lewis started playing the bass first, actually, when he was getting into the more rocky music and I was still listening to Justin Timberlake, eventually started picking up the guitar and just learning it myself. The White Stripes, I remember as well, were a key band. They had a real iconic look and a real distinct sound. When I heard the Endless Peaks, I feel a bit of Incubus, Pearl Jam, maybe even Jamiro Kwai. Sometimes I, I remember that sounds like what in uh, Yeah, there's 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 loads really and started listening to more um, like psychedelic music if you like. So there's that sort of influence, you know, the bands like um, Tame Impala, Temples, Pond. But before that, you know, my one of my favorite bands of all time is Bombay Bicycle Club. They were a band that I started when I was learning to play the bass guitar, I would just play along to their songs. And then like bands like Blur, like Lloyd Love, Radiohead. Now, really, I listen to mostly, well, more hip hop than I do alternative. Probably like a split between the two. And why are you listening right now? You mentioned some hip hop, but can you tell me some of them? Um, yeah, I listened to a lot of uh, the, uh, the group called The Far Side, who were big, big in the 90s. Um, they are like as pure as it gets for me in terms of hip hop. I mean, obviously, it's not new music. I love it. Also, a lot of Freddie Gibbs. Um, he did an album with Mad Lib called Bandana, which is awesome. And then, like, Anderson Pack, who's more soulful, but also he just does create sort of like alternative music as well. His music's got a real mixture. That's a lot of what's been on my stereo. But then again, in terms of like alternative, like psychedelic porn crumpets, I've been listening to a lot of them recently. If you could collaborate with any musician, dead or alive, who will you pick? Can I choose one dead and one alive maybe? Like Radiohead's one of my favorite bands, probably like Tom, Tom York. Um, a dead person, I'd probably choose David Bowie. I think he'd be pretty cool. We watched uh, Labyrinth not so long ago. And that was a great film. Damon Albarn would be one for me, just because he's, you know, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a master collaborator. Is there any particular song that you enjoy to play in online? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> From the more older songs, Fair Weather is one of my favorites, just because that, that song means a lot to me. 
anyway and i love the i love the fact that it's a mixture between you know happy and quite aggressive um and then out of the new one it's super uh, romantic it is because you know it's, it's about the highs and lows of being with someone really and then yeah out of the new songs uh, dead to rights is what, another new song we got coming out fairly soon um that i've really only played live once but i'm really looking forward to playing it live more because it's got some real nice moments in it which one it's a song called Dead to Rights. It's not, it's not out yet. Ah, okay. Good to know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't listen to that one. <laughs> I really like playing holographic. Holographic scene is my favourite. To play live, you can let loose a bit at the end. It's got a big build-up, quite climactic. Which is your dream record label? I really like Heavenly Recordings. They're a good like British indie sort of psychedelic label, which I really like. Yeah, it's no, not something I've ever thought about, to be honest. I'd just be happy if someone with a decent record label came and said, hey, do you want a record deal? <laughs> but as long as there were some other good bands. I think um, there's one called XL Recordings, got quite a few big names on it. Which nice. is your guilty pleasure on music? I actually don't mind the song Yummy by Justin, Justin Bieber. I listened to that the other day. Yeah, you got the yummy, yummy. <laughs> But like that's that was one of those moments. It was in my head just going over, and I was like, I just have to listen to it. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. Uh, I think I was talking to someone the other day about the back catalogue of Girls Aloud. They've got <laughs> some good tunes. Fuck, Mary and Kill. Okay. Okay, a staircase. Oh, the feather. song. Do the yeah. song. And wow. bare bones. Oh, I can't do that to them all. <laughs> a staircase, fair weather, and bare bones. I reckon probably fuck bare bones. <laughs> Mary, fair weather, fair weather, and kill staircase, but not because not because we don't love it. That was one of the first songs that we wrote, and I love the, the sound of that song, especially how it was produced and the way it sounds as a, as a final thing. Just because it's a little bit less, it's just not as new. That's the only that's the only reason I wouldn't I wouldn't I I could marry that song as well, you know, because it, it takes. My, yeah, I don't know. That's quite hard. It's, it's hard for us to, to do that to our work. Why are you doing it to us? I thought we were going to do celebrities. Like, you yeah. show <laughs> three celebrities and we get to choose. No. <laughs> this will be difficult. You will hate it. <laughs> Pink Floyd, Per Jam, and Metronomy. And we're talking about the music here. We're not talking about the members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The music, the music. Probably fuck uh, Pearl Jam. Marry Pink Floyd and kill Metronomy. Well, I don't want to kill Metronomy, but I like Metronomy quite a lot. But I mean, when you're comparing it to those two, like, yeah. Because you said our songs sound like one of the songs sound like Metronomy, right? Is that where you? The one that you released, the the new one that you released, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You think that sounds like Metronomy, do you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mentioned that because um, you know, I'm just I, I just said the first thing that I thought when I was listening to it. So I was like, okay, this look sounds like, and I thought about metronomy and I was like, I love metronomy. The bass um, of metronomy, I think that is one of the best in the world. Have you been to see them live before? No. <laughs> oh. When this is on, they are really good live. I just been like in four, um, actually just two or three big events with, it was Bjork last year. Bjork, mm -hmm. uh, The Strokes, and Metallica. Oh, wow. <laughs> the rest, it has been in Venezuela with like my friends or Venezuelan bands. Anvil, The Joiners, and Chaplins, and Cellar Bar. What was it, Anvil, Chaplins, the, and Joiners? The Joiners the is in Southampton. Again, we don't want to really want to slag off any venues. Marry all of them. In, in some cultures, you're allowed three wives. So we would marry all of them. <laughs> I thought you would say that you would marry Ambil because you have been there like 5,000 of times. Quite a fun venue as well, though. Mm, it's got a good vibe in there. Yeah. Nice and sweaty. Nice sweaty underground vibe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this one is really tough, okay? Tough. Last one that we refuse to answer. Nakamura. And going? heroes <laughs> and red faces. 
You're harsh. Yeah. You're really mean. Okay, what you have to do is to put me in contact with them and I will ask them the same question to see what they say. <laughs> Some of those people might say no, but, Yeah, who? Who are they? Yeah. Funny story though about Red Faces, our drummer forgot her, Chanel forgot her hi-hat stand when we played a gig. Oh, in fact, all of our stands, didn't she? I think she, we didn't bring any because we thought we were going to share the kit. And it turns out when we got there, the guys said, no, you can't really borrow our stuff. We ended up talking them into it. And Chanel was only like, really, she's really small. And her drum and their drummer was really like, massive and all of the stands had been locked into position so you couldn't move them they all been like bolted so chanel had to play a whole gig like <laughs> trying, to drum, trying to drum like ridiculously high stands okay i think that is done okay oh there we go why not yeah and your name is over here <laughs> uh, so that was uh basically a talent competition I guess to to, uh, to be able to play the festival common people but it was fun it was a fun show it was a good show yeah smoking aces smoking aces we're going back a bit now 2013 yeah so this this was um when I first sort of moved to Bournemouth he said oh we're playing an open mic you should come along and play it turns out it was an actual yeah. gig and I just rocked up and he asked me just to play along with loads of his songs at a gig how about this one? What were you doing uh, here? Nice. That was the first set. First set, yeah. So when we recorded Holographic Scene, Staircase and Fair Weather, that was the guy there in the middle, Barney. We recorded our songs for us in his garage. Lewis is chilling out, obviously. Yeah. So it's really easy to fall asleep on that tiny little sofa thing. So this is Theo when he was in our, when he is in our band, actually. That was that was the recent sessions we did. That's for recording Bare Bones. Again, recorded in someone's attic. We don't really go to studios. <laughs> <laughs> I put this section like the um, lyrics inspiration. Yeah. I don't know if this is true. I've been working on new stuff. I see a little egg there. That's a little shaker, actually. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> like it makes a makes a. Ah, okay. <laughs> Maraca. Maraca. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Bormer. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. In, in oh, it's not there anymore, is it? No, that roundabout's not gone. Not there anymore. <laughs> the balloon as well. Right trip down memory lane, this is. Yeah, this one as well is very weird. Yeah, they don't it's do that anymore. It's like 90s and it's, it was just 12, uh, 2012. Yeah, we're talking about like iPhone 3GS there, I think. This is more about Bournemouth. Yep, Fallon. This is beautiful. <laughs> I'm not very good at spelling. Fallon. Fallon. <laughs> No. Staircase. This is a staircase. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And this is the last one. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Joey, Joe Hoey for those great photos. Uh, just thank you for being a wonderful, wonderful uh, interviewer. Hi. <laughs> you are the best, guys. Um, do you want to say something for the people that is outside Bournemouth to know, to come and know Bournemouth or even for the city centre of Bournemouth? It's a beautiful town. Um, we've got a lovely, lovely beach, seven miles long, golden sand. Um, and the sun's always shining. Sun's always shining. <laughs> and our door is always open. Yeah, so don't rob us, please. <laughs> Go and listen to Bare Bones, that's what we really want to tell people. Yeah, don't, go don't worry about song. coming down to Bournemouth, you don't have to come here. Just <laughs> literally just go, and, go on Spotify, iTunes, whatever it is, and just listen to Bare Bones several times. Tell your friends about it, tell your mum about it, um, and tell us about how much you love it. And uh, it? then we'll release more music and we'll release t-shirts and we'll go and play more gigs and festivals and eventually, you know, we'll be a household name. Um, about bare bones, what it is about? Can you tell people what it is about? Like a spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a mixture, really. Um, it's most. I mean, Lloyd, Lloyd Lloyd's part that he wrote was inspired about climate change and stuff like that. And then the chorus part, which I wrote, is uh, kind of more about. I mean, I know the whole thing, in my opinion, is very much about like, attitudes and the way that people respond to certain situations and how. Um, for the greater good, we do need to change our attitudes and beliefs and do more to help each other and to help the planet. 
I think is a nice way to, to sum it up. Hi, that's super cool. Now I need to pay a lot of attention to the lyrics. Yeah. It isn't, you know, it's not necessarily that clear in the, the, in the, in the lyrics, but maybe it's a little bit more critical. I think it is about change and then about accepting yeah. change and stop lying to yourself or to others to try and make yourself either look better or seem better or something like that, you know? It's about just biting the bullet and getting on with it. Okay, guys, thank you very much. It has Cheers. been amazing. <laughs> Great time. Bye. Mucho bueno. Mucho gato. Muchas gracias. Adiós. Muy bien. Muy bueno. Muy, muy, muy bien.